So I needed to buy a new computer for a client. So I got on Amazon and I wanted to find something that had a good amount of performance, was pretty fast with Windows 11, and would basically do everything they needed to do going forward. So I found this machine for around $500, and it actually says on the description for business, study, videos, and gaming. Gaming? Really? On a $500 computer? And then I thought, well, you know what? There's plenty of people out there like me who kind of are middle of the road. They play some games, but they're not hardcore gamers, but they're not Facebook gamers. So I thought, you know what? Let's give it a try with some regular games and see how she does. And if you're just getting into gaming, it might be something you're interested in. So we're going to get in today. I'm going to show you all about the computer, how fast it is, what it can do. And we're also going to try some games and see if it might be something you're interested in. Let's get started. First thing you want to notice, it's got a standard power adapter, Ethernet port, two USB 2.0, two USB 3.0, one HDMI, one VGA, and of course your standard speaker and headphone connections, as well as four ports on the board for later expansion. It's a rugged little case. You can see it's pretty light. I can pick it up with one hand. It does have a pretty cool look on the front of it. As you can see, it's got four USB ports. It also has an SD card reader and the CD and DVD drive as well. And a headphone jack on the front. And it is Windows 11 ready. Getting inside the case is super easy. Just one screw and a panel that lifts right off. So one problem I found is it does have a small proprietary power supply, not the kind you can just go down to Best Buy and purchase. So that could be an issue for some people. One thing I do like about this is it does have an extra bay for a secondary hard drive. And as you can see here, it's got the NVMe drive, has two PCI expansion slots, also has extra connections from the power supply for a secondary hard drive. So before we get started, you guys came here for an honest review and I'm going to give you one. First thing that's got to go is this. This little tiny mouse just isn't cutting it. And I don't even really have big hands, but this thing, I can't even grab around it. If you have tiny hands, you might be okay. If you have an existing mouse already to use, no problem. But the one that came with it, it's crap. I gotta replace it. I'll be right back. Now, the other thing is the keyboard. Now, if you already have an existing keyboard that you like, no big deal. The one that came with this machine is super tiny. And I mean, like, look how tiny that is. So what I wanna do, uh, I'm gonna go through all the main system settings on here. I wanna just show you what it's got, how it performs, and then at the very end, we will try and see about playing some games and see how that goes. The purchase price on this one was about $539 from Amazon. So for a brand new computer with pretty decent performance, that's not a bad deal. Ultimately, if you're a hardcore gamer, you probably already know that this is probably not the machine for you. This machine is probably geared more towards people who want a high level of regular performance and maybe a mid-grade level of gaming performance. So we'll go through all that and show you. Uh, so first thing I want to do, I want to go into the device manager. This machine has an AMD Ryzen 3 4300G built-in graphics card. It's a chip on the motherboard. Uh, it's a four core processor with eight threads. Right out of the box, it comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and a 64-bit Windows 11, which is pretty good. One of the things I love about this machine is it has a 512 gig M.2 NVMe chip, SSD chip. And so it's very fast and you get half a terabyte of storage space. So as you can see, it's pretty darn quick when you're opening folders and things. I mean, they just pop up super fast. So in a business environment, that would be absolutely something that you would love, which ironically is exactly the purpose of this computer was for a business environment. And you can see programs open super fast. Now this performance here is going to be based more on my internet speed, which isn't really, I think I have a 12 megabit connection. It's not super fast, but the browser itself opens ridiculously fast. Say when you click on it, I mean, just in a couple seconds, it pops right up. And you know, if you have a computer that's much, much older, uh, you know, where you click on something and it seems like it takes forever to pull up, you're talking 500 bucks to have a machine that runs way faster. And see, Microsoft Edge pulls up even faster on this machine. So that's really a cool thing. And of course, you have all the advantages of Windows 11. Uh, now, it is certainly better to buy Windows 11 pre-installed versus upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11, simply because the upgrade versions don't necessarily have all the bugs worked out, but generally the Windows 11 from the factory are. 
So if you're looking at possibly getting a new machine, this would actually be a really good one to invest in. And it's certainly at a great price point at $539. It's not bad at all. But so far, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, like I said, when you click on stuff, I mean, it comes up fast. It's really making me think that my old fast computer really isn't that fast anymore. So yeah, I mean, as you can see, whatever browser you use, it comes up super, super quick. So if you're wanting that type of performance, whether it's an office environment or you just need a new home PC, it's got plenty of storage on there for you. It's got the NVMe drive, which is no moving parts. So that's gonna be a, an amazing feature here. Now everyone has their own opinion of what makes a fast computer. It depends on whether you just use it for Facebook or you play games. To me, the most important factor in performance of a machine is how fast programs and files actually open. So on this machine, I'm actually pretty impressed. If you look here, I just installed Adobe Reader and when I click on it, I mean literally almost before I even finish saying the word reader, it just opened. It's instant. That is crazy fast. Here I'm going to open open office and click create a text document. Look at that. Boom. Now if you're in an office environment or you're a student, this would be an amazing machine. You can see how fast it is. It's just crazy crazy fast. So if the 512 gigs of storage that comes with it is enough for you, and it's in your budget this is actually a great machine for your average user but that being said there's always people that want the actual specs and the numbers on the machine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a program called cinebench and what that does is it actually tests the physical hardware and gives you an output score so if you're one of those people that want to see the actual cinebench score i'm going to show that to you right now so what we're going to do is we're going to run a cpu test with multi-core because we have a four core processor I'm just gonna click start and turn it loose. And then you'll be able to see the actual results when it's done. The way that this program does is it creates, you know, as you can see, it'll like create visuals, multiple frames. Uh, it tests every part of the machine, the processor, the graphics card, all that. And if you're one of these type of people that wanna know what the Cinebench score is, this will show you. This is just a really good way to physically test the hardware and give it a benchmark against other computers. Cinebench is kind of a standard and so if you know what one score is on one machine, you can compare it to another. So we'll just let this run and we'll see what happens. Okay, so if you look at the test results here, this didn't actually do too bad for a standard desktop. It came in right around the uh, Intel 11th Gen Core i7s. Uh, like I said, it's not designed for hardcore gaming. However, it is a great performance computer. So if you actually look at the results, you know, once you start getting here into the middle and upper comparative uh, machines, you're seeing, you know, these are hardcore gaming machines. So for it to end up here around the i7-7700, that's actually not too terribly bad for a standard desktop. So the next step is going to be, what does it look like playing real games? Okay, so to keep things fair, since Cinebench probably consumed a lot of resources running that test. I'm going to restart the computer so it's fresh and clean and then I'm going to run some of these games and we'll see what it looks like. I'm going to play this game called Rocket League. It's, you know, it's a middle of the road game. It's not super graphic intensive, but we want to see what it looks like. And what I'm really concerned with is just overall smoothness and performance without having to make any changes to settings, changing frame rates and things like that. And remember, this is not a gaming machine. It's not designed to be gaming. But, as you can see on the screen, you know, I mean, of course, it's just the intro. We'll see what the actual gameplay is like. But, you know, so far, it seems relatively smooth. Now, again, if you're a hardcore gamer, this is probably, you know, you're not even considering this because it's just, you know, you'll rip it apart. But your average person who wants to play some fun games that they go purchase online, this is actually not too bad. I have no idea how to play this game. My kid plays this game, so I don't even know how to do this. If you watch it, you can see it's pretty smooth. For a desktop machine that's designed for work, it moves around pretty quick. As you can see, the game plane is pretty sharp. For me, it would be great because I don't really play games very much, but when I want to play a game, this would be the kind of game that I would play. You know, like a flight sim or something like that. I don't care if it has like graphics that are so ridiculously detailed. I just want it to not be choppy. That's what a lot of middle of the road gamers like. And you can tell, you know, you can look in the stands, you can see, you know, um, you know, it's probably not the most detailed game in the world, but I think that looks pretty good, honestly, for me, anyway. That'll give you an idea of Rocket League. Now what I want to do is there's another game that's a little more 
um, graphic intensive. So the next game I want to play is a little more graphic intensive. It's called Counter Strike. It's called Counter Strike Global Offensive, and this one probably will maybe not be as smooth as uh, Rocket League. This is creeping into the type of game that a hardcore gamer would play. So if you're one of those people that kind of likes these first-person shooters, but you don't want to spend fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars on a gaming machine, this will give you a better idea of what kind of performance you can expect from this computer, whether it's buying one for your kid uh, for Christmas or just, you know, you like to play games, this will give you a great idea. So, and again, same as before, I have no idea what I'm doing. All the gamers watching this are probably laughing hysterically right now. Well, unfortunately, I am not a gamer and I couldn't figure it out. So, what I thought I would do instead is maybe find something that's a little more reflective of the kind of performance you would get um, in a machine that actually runs pretty good. So I thought of this particular creator, MKBHD, who, Marquez Brownlee, he runs a tech channel on, on YouTube and he films all of his videos in full 8K. This will probably give you a better idea of how well the graphics work on this machine watching his stuff in high definition. Okay, so I'm going to change the settings here to as high as possible, which I believe that's 4K right there. Okay, so now we're going to watch this video in 4K and you'll get an idea. Let me turn the closed captioning off. There. So we're watching a 4K video right now, which, you know, I think relatively smooth. Also consider that a lot of this is directly related to my internet speed. So as you can see here, full 4K, it does, it's, it's smooth, but it occasionally pauses for a half a second. So let's switch to, um, let's switch to 1080p and see what kind of difference. And see it's much more fluid, no breaks, no pauses. I actually think that looks pretty darn good. So, um, you know, for a $500 computer, it certainly looks better than the one on my computer. So overall, actually, I think this computer is actually pretty decent. It's got eight USB ports on it, uh, two super speed ports on the back. Um, you know, it still has a CD DVD drive if you want that. It has HDMI output, quad core processor, which actually didn't do too bad on the Cinebench test. For 500 bucks, if you're looking to upgrade and you certainly can see again, um, you know, opening applications is ridiculously fast. I mean, that is just super, super fast. And so if that's what you're looking for, this would be an amazing purchase. If you're looking for gaming, depending on the kind of game and whether or not you know how to play them, this would actually be pretty good. Um, certainly maybe for a teenager who wants to get into gaming, the upside is that you could add a graphics card, a higher end graphics card, to this computer because it is a mid tower so you could put one in later and that would give you amazing graphics capability what you saw here was just basically what is built onto the motherboard now also think about it too this particular machine as you can see does support up to 32 gigabytes of ram it only has eight in here now so if you wanted a machine that you could start gaming and absolutely upgrade with a better graphics card and more memory this is actually a really good deal. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you are a gamer or want to get into gaming. This actually wouldn't be too bad for an entry level, like for a teenager, and then if they want to expand later and they're really into it, mom and dad could just buy them extra components instead of a whole new computer. If you're running a home office or a small business, this would be perfect. Even a college student, this would be great. So uh, I hope this review helped you. Other than the really crappy, tiny two-finger mouse, I actually would have to give this machine probably for regular business purposes a strong 9 out of 10. Uh, it's upgradable, it's fast, it's got a lot of storage, a lot of memory. For gaming, I would probably give it closer to a 4.5 to 5 because it really isn't designed for that. As far as watching videos and things like that, absolute 10. And, you know, like I said, it has expandability and it does what it needs to do. And for 530 bucks, you really can't beat that. So I'll put a link down below if you want to click on Amazon and check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any questions, 
Um, a lot of times I do get questions after I've posted the video about can it play this or can it play that. So that's one of the reasons why I made this video specifically playing Rocket League and the other game I was not able to figure out. Um, because I don't know every game and I'm not a gamer. I did give you the Cinebench results and also showed you what a full 1080p full screen, how smooth it is on the screen. So depending on what games you play, that might help answer the question, but feel free to ask those anyway down below. So with that being said, I hope this was really helpful for you. I look forward to making many more review videos for you in the future. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Share this with somebody you know that you think might be interested, and I'll see you in the next video.